What's going on guys? Jason here from The Comprehensive Dentist. And I realize it's been a while since I've talked to you last. I think the last video was like September 7th or 9th or something. And man, it's been, what, five weeks almost since I've done a video on here. And you know, as the, the main person for this channel, if I'm not doing it, there's nothing going up. So one week I was in a sleep dentistry course. Uh, Dr. Jameson Spencer, who um, I'm hoping to get on here in the future. I just gotta make time for it. Uh, he's an excellent TMD and sleep dentistry specialist. Uh, the whole course that week was on how, uh, as general dentists, we can help with patients who have sleep apnea. And that was an awesome course. Um, you're definitely gonna see more content on that in the future. Second week, you know, I live in North Carolina, so we got hit by Hurricane Florence. I think it was out without power for like four and a half days. So if you don't have power, you're not doing YouTube. So um, that was a little bit of a hold up. The next week, my wife and I took our kids to Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. And then we spent a couple of days at the beach as well. I did not think about dentistry at all that week and it was amazing. So it was good to clear my head. Um, I highly recommend that you do that once or twice a year. And then I came back from that. We did a CAD CAM course, an advanced CAD CAM course at the residency I work at. And um, I'm gonna put a link to some of the stuff uh, up here as well because uh, Dr. Chris Lambert has done some videos in the past for this channel on CAD CAM. Uh, specifically designing implant restorations using Cirac machine and so I would highly recommend you check those out if that's something that you do in your practice or you're thinking about doing and then the following week was just catching up from things I've missed and this week's been kind of crazy as well so that's why you haven't seen a video in a little bit um, sorry for the long rant but I wanted to keep you guys posted another cool thing though is I think the last video I posted, we were under 300 subscribers. And as of today, we are closing in on 400. So to my surprise, you guys continue to show up and hit the subscribe button, even though I haven't posted. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, I can tell you that my heart is, is definitely in dentistry and specifically in dental education. Um, I'm a lifelong learner. If I learn something, I want to share that with anybody I can, and that is hence why this channel exists. And so thank you for subscribing, and um, I just really appreciate it. All right, so today's topic, I wanna to kinda of revisit a topic I did a long time ago, and that is on silver diming fluoride, or SDF. Now, if you don't know what that is, or you haven't seen the video I did on that product, I'm gonna link it right here. Make sure you check that out. So today, what I wanna do is I wanna focus on how you can use silver diming fluoride in your practice to help with incipient carious lesions. The last video I did on YouTube was four tips and tricks to avoid over treatment. If you haven't watched that, I am also gonna link that here as well. And one of the things I talked about in that video uh, relates to over-diagnosing interproximal carious lesions. Now in 1992, there was what's called the Pitts article. And in this particular study, they took radiographs of patients and they looked at where the caries was interproximately on the radiograph. And then they placed orthodontic spacers between the teeth. And once the orthodontic spacer was removed, they were able to see directly on the interproximal surface and determine if there was a cavitation or not. And so what this study actually showed was that if we have a carious lesion that appears radiographically to extend to the DEJ, then there's about a 40% chance that that lesion is actually cavitated on the surface. And so really, I mean, honestly and truly, if you think about it, when lesions extend to the DEJ, all of you who have been to dental school know that is the typical board lesion. However, this study showed that there's only a 60% chance that it's actually not cavitated, right? And it's 40% chance it is cavitated. 
And so that being said, I mean, do you want to be aggressive and do you want to treat these lesions or is this a lesion that you may decide to quote unquote watch in your practice? If you're going to watch a lesion, I personally think that we don't just watch lesions, okay? We need to do something to help remineralize that tooth if we truly think it's not cavitated. Now, typically in our practice, we probably use things like fluoride varnishes. Um, some people use things like Elmi paste. Uh, some people do the whole, hey, I'm gonna prescribe you Prevident approach. Some people put patients on chlorhexidine to reduce the microbial load. But let's look at a way you can use silver diamine fluoride to actually help arrest that curious lesion. And that is kind of the treatment in this case, right? We're doing a very minimally invasive treatment that will help arrest the lesion and we should not see that lesion get any bigger. One of my residents had a patient that had an incipient lesion between uh, some lower left molars. And we made the call to treat this with silver diamine fluoride. So to do that, basically we took some super floss. And if you've ever used super floss, you know there's a uh, part of the floss that's, for lack of a better word, I guess it's kind of spongy almost. Um, that part of the floss is really absorbent. So if you get any fluid on that, it really wicks through that part of the floss very well. So what we decided to do was we stuck the floss underneath the contact area and we basically created kind of like a U between the teeth, right? We just kind of pulled the floss kind of tight, holding both ends of the floss. And then we took the silver diamine fluoride and we very closely as possible to the tooth, we dabbed the silver diamine fluoride onto that part of the super floss. And what you'll notice is, is as you continue to moisten that part of the super floss, it will actually wick underneath the contact area and you'll start to see it on the other side of the super floss. Now this particular um, brand of silver diamine fluoride from Elevate Oral Care um, is a blue silver diamine fluoride. It used to be a clear composition, but they changed that to a blue color. So it's really nice and you can see that on the super floss. Premise is, is you hold that there, you know, caries in approximately typically is right below the contact. So we're pulling that tight into the contact. We're allowing the silver diamine fluoride to kind of saturate that incipient lesion for at least 60 seconds. And then we very carefully remove the super floss from the mouth. And if you want, you can actually light cure that area. Um, light curing has been showed to speed up that process of the silver diamine fluoride where it actually blackens the tooth. So you could do that if you want. Typically you're not really going to see that in approximately, so it's really not a um, super critical thing that you do. But just take care not to get silver diamine fluoride everywhere. Again, if you watched the video I did a long time ago, um, there's a lot of ways that this can stain things, so you want to be careful. And you also want to really protect the patient's gingiva and the teeth from this stuff from just going everywhere. So that's one way that you can use silver diamine fluoride to treat incipient lesions. And there's actually codes for this that you can use in your practice. Um, not all insurance companies are really allowing um, these codes to be used at this time. I'm going to kind of drop those codes down here uh, so you can see what those are. But you know, it's one of those things where in my mind too, even if you cannot be reimbursed for it, I think you're doing a huge service to your patients by attempting this treatment option. And you're not just watching the lesion, you're actually treating that lesion to an extent and you're having very high success rates with this as well. So if you're seeing these kind of patients, you know, maybe you want to still do the Prevident, maybe you want to do some varnish, but don't throw out the option of using silver diamine fluoride as a caries remineralizing and arresting agent. All right, so that's gonna be all for today. Um, hope you enjoyed this. I hope you find that this was very useful. Um, hit that like button if you did and subscribe if you have not already. And I'll see you next time.